Hi everyone, welcome to this lesson where today we're talking all things rectangles. So before this lesson we learned about parallelograms and a rectangle is a parallelogram with four right angles as well as all the properties of a parallelogram. So opposite sides are parallel and congruent, opposite angles are congruent, and they're all right angles in a rectangle. So that's the special little addition to the opposite angles are congruent. Consecutive angles are supplementary, so again, Two angles that are consecutive will always add up to 180, which makes sense. If they're all right, then it's always 90 plus 90 is 180. And also diagonals bisect each other. However, along with the diagonals bisect each other that we learned in a parallelogram, diagonals are actually congruent to each other. So not only do they bisect each other, but they are of equal length. Here it says quadrilateral ABCD is a rectangle. If the measure of angle ACD, so this angle here that I have marked up, is 5x plus 1, and the measure of angle DBC is 6x plus 1, find x. So something we probably want to think about is, you know, how can I look at those angles that I have marked up in my diagram and make some kind of connection between the two? Now, remember what we said about the diagonals. Not only do the diagonals bisect each other, but the diagonals are congruent. So that means if this diagonal of DB is bisected by AC and AC is congruent to DB, then it means that all of these segments are actually congruent to each other. Which then, if you think about it, this angle, DBC, is congruent to this angle. Because notice I've got an isosceles triangle here now, right? This is actually an isosceles triangle. So therefore, I know that that angle is going to um, be this angle here. They're both the base angles. So now I can make a couple comparisons with this. And I can say, okay, well, now that angle of DBC, which is 6x plus 1, is really the same here. And this angle, ACD, is 5x plus 1. Well, these two angles would add up to get 90 degrees because we know that a rectangle has 90 degree angles. Now, when I wrote this out, I was talking about those two angles plus the 90 adding up to the 180. That's another way I could do it. Kind of unnecessary with the 90 because we're just going to subtract it out anyway. So really just setting those expressions equal to 90 is probably the best way to do this. You're going to go ahead and combine like terms. So 5x plus 6x is 11x. 1 plus 1 plus 90 is 92. Again, the equation would look different if I just added them up and set them equal to 90. No matter what, we're going to end up getting x equals 8. Always, guys, make sure that you go back and read the problem um, so that, you know, if the problem is asking you to find x, which this one is, you have x and you're done. If it's asking us to actually figure out an angle measure, make sure you always go back and plug it in. So now let's take a look at a proof. It says given EFGH, EFGH is a rectangle. So this entire figure is a rectangle. So all the properties of a rectangle we know are going to be involved here. It says prove that triangle EHG... So EHG is congruent to triangle FGH. All right, so I have to prove that those two triangles are congruent. So now I probably want to think about a couple things. Um, I, if I prove triangles are congruent, I'm most likely going to use, you know, side, angle, side, 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 angle, side, angle, whatever that could be. I probably have a couple different ways to do this proof. So what I'm going to show you is just one of those ways. Um, but think about properties of a, of a rectangle, which include properties of a parallelogram, right? Opposite sides are congruent. Opposite angles are congruent. We have a 90 degree, we have 90 degree angles. So here if I start off and I say, okay, well, EFGH is a rectangle, I want to then say EFGH is also a parallelogram because a parallelogram is going to be kind of the more basic quadrilateral figure that we're going to work off. And then we're going to be able to use those properties of parallelograms going forward. So I would be able to then say this, that, okay, well, EH is congruent to FG, and that's just because in a parallelogram, opposite sides are congruent. So now I have one pair of sides marked congruent. Okay, great. I can also say that HG is congruent to HG. Notice they share this same common side, and we should remember that's definitely the reflexive property. So now I have two different options. So far, I've got two pairs of sides. I could definitely prove the third side by saying that the diagonals are congruent. That's a definition of a rectangle. I could say that angle H is congruent to angle G because they are right angles and all right angles are congruent to each other. 
And so I could actually use side, side, side. I could use side angle side here. I have some options. Um, in this proof, I did say that the diagonals were congruent because that's part of the definition of a rectangle. And therefore, if my diagonals are congruent, and I will just mark those up really quickly, uh, one, two, three, one, two, three, it's kind of tough when they're overlapping, then I'd be able to say that they are congruent by side, side, side. So again, that's just one of the many ways that I would be able to do this. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at what it means to prove on a coordinate plane whether or not a figure is a rectangle. And we can use either the slope formula or the distance formula. So if I gave you these ordered pairs, negative 2, 3, 4, 3, 4, negative 1, negative 2, negative 1, and we plotted the points, we're most likely going to be able to see that, yes, it, it's definitely a rectangle. But mathematically, we know that in geometry we need to prove it, and we actually have to use uh, numbers, and we have to use some actual proof. So what we could do by using the slope formula is basically like what we did with a parallelogram. If opposite sides have the same slope, then opposite sides are parallel. But we want to actually add an extra layer to that and say, not only do they have to be the same slopes, but the opposite pairs of slopes should be negative reciprocals of each other. That way they are perpendicular, which means they create right angles, which means it's definitely a rectangle. So in this figure, if I was to calculate the slope of AD and BC, which happen to both be undefined, and then if I calculated the slope of AB and DC, which happen to be zero, undefined and zero are negative reciprocals of each other, so therefore they're perpendicular and it definitely is a rectangle. If you had slopes of two-thirds and negative uh, three over two, same thing, then you would know that it's definitely a rectangle. The other idea is to use the distance formula, and it says here to first prove the figure is a parallelogram. Um, so again, same figure. So let's say I prove that it was a parallelogram by using midpoints. I personally love doing that. If I calculate the midpoints of my diagonals, and they are the same, so the midpoint from A to C is 1, 1, the midpoint from B to D is also 1, 1. Um, that's enough to prove that it is a parallelogram. Okay, then I would have to use my distance formula. And my distance formula would then be, okay, well, as long as the diagonals bisect each other, which means the diagonal, and then the diagonals are congruent, then that's enough information to prove that it's a rectangle. So the diagonal of BC, if I calculated this length here from A to C, I could use my Pythagorean theorem. I think it's a little easier because notice it actually creates the um, hypotenuse of a right triangle. I end up getting 2 radical 13, and guess what? BD is obviously exactly the same. Uh, you know, it's a hypotenuse of the same legs of 1, 2, 3, 4, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Um, so 4 squared plus 6 squared is always going to give me the same result. And then if my diagonals are congruent to each other, it's definitely a rectangle. If I was able to prove that it was a parallelogram and then my diagonals had different lengths, it's still a parallelogram, but just not a rectangle. So now I'm going to show you um, how to use both procedures for this figure here. So if I gave you this rectangle and you uh, plotted those points, the uh, slope of AB and CD are both 3. The slopes from B to C and then A to D are both negative 1 third. So that definitely shows me that the opposite sides have the same slope, so they're parallel. And then the opposite slopes are negative reciprocals of each other, which is enough to prove that it's a rectangle. Here, if I want to use the idea of proving it's a parallelogram and then finding the length of my diagonals, that would also work. So here, um, the midpoint from A to C is 1 half, 1 half. The midpoint from B to D is also 1 half, 1 half, which is right here. And then if I wanted to calculate the lengths of my diagonals, so from, B, um, from A to C, the distance from A to C, Remember, if you do this, you could use your distance formula. Um, that's never a problem. You could go ahead and um, use Pythagorean theorem. This one, um, you can see you most likely want to use your um, Pythagorean theorem. If I don't use the sides of the actual rectangle, but I look at the horizontal and the vertical, so I've got a horizontal length here of 7, a vertical length of 1, and that helps me get 5 radical 2 for my distance. And then BD would end up being the exact same thing. However, when I make the diagonal for BD, something that is helpful is then looking at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 
and then one, two, three, four, five. So if I can make a hypotenuse of BD out of the horizontal and vertical grid lines, notice I still get five radical two, which means it's definitely a rectangle. In this figure here, if I was to plot these points, okay, my slope of AB is negative, is negative two, and so is the slope of GC. My slope from A to D is a positive one half, Definitely negative two and one half are negative reciprocals of each other, perpendicular, so it's definitely a rectangle. Then if I needed to calculate my midpoint, well, the midpoint from my diagonals, A to C, is 1.5, uh, negative one. Right here, that's the, the midpoint from A to C, which happens to be the same midpoint from B to D, which proves it definitely is a parallelogram. And then the length from A to C is just easily five units. That's nice. It's always nice when it's horizontal and you can just count across. The length from B to D. And if I use my, uh, my horizontal, my vertical, so this would be a hypotenuse with a horizontal of three units, a vertical of four units. And if I use my Pythagorean theorem to solve for the hypotenuse, I end up getting five. And it definitely is a rectangle. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.